Hello and welcome to this week's IG Live. Today we are going to be talking to Morgan Mincy's, who's um, a pretty little bookshelf. And we're going to be talking about why it's important not only to read diverse books, but to not stop there. Once you've read the diverse books, then what? What do you do? How do you use that as a springboard to engage with community? So it's a really wonderful topic and I'm so glad that she's able here for you. Remember, we do this every week, usually at 1 p.m. Eastern. And so you can always go back and look at our archive. We've had some really wonderful interviews. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. But why don't we go ahead and jump in because I think this is such a great topic. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do? All right. Well, hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Morgan, Pretty Little Bookshelf on Instagram and TikTok. Um, my platform is really a place that amplifies books by authors of color, um, primarily fiction. So when you do come to my page, you'll see a lot of fiction recommendations um, and also just a space for community and an opportunity for us to connect through books. But then again, as we'll be discussing today, taking it another step step to um, really impact your community in your day-to-day. -day. Well, can you tell us where did your love of reading come from? Is that something you loved since you, you were a child or is that something that came later on in, in your life? came later. I did not enjoy reading when I was younger. It was more of a chore, like I needed to do it for an assignment. Let's just get this done. But then um, I would say after college, when I started reading for pleasure, mm -hmm. I came to find my love for reading again. And I got more excited when I joined a book club, actually. And so that helped me find new authors to read, but also to just read more. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love that, you know, it seems like so many people, you know, they, they didn't love it when they were a kid, they kind of get discouraged and they never try to come back to it. So I love that story. And I think you do so much to help people kind of rediscover a love of reading that maybe if they didn't have it growing up. And before we dive into our topic, just one more time, yeah. can we remind people, why is it so important to read diverse books? Well, <laughs> Yes. This is a great question. I'm sure you no, um, that like <laughs> I yeah. it's it's an opportunity for us to connect with one another on a deeper level and to really form empathy and to learn different cultural experiences and traditions outside of our own so that when we are making meaningful connections and forming new relationships we have a better understanding and appreciation for where that person is coming from. Oh, great answer. That's a really succinct way to, to put something that is a really big topic. <laughs> great way to say it. And, and so now to get into what we were really wanting to discuss, because people should know, we actually had a chance to talk ahead of time. And yes. when you came up with this topic as such a great one, because I feel like in the last few years, there have been maybe a little bit more awareness about the need to read from um, a diverse range of authors. But then a lot of times it doesn't go beyond that. It's just people's like, oh, great. I, I read the book. Now right. I have to move on. But what is the danger of letting it stop there? So when you just read one book by an author of color, let's say outside of your cultural background, it has the, I guess, misfortune of potentially confirming a implicit bias or um, stereotypes that are not truly a accurate representation of that population. And so when you read diversely, continuously, and that you're always looking for books by authors outside of your culture, it gives you an opportunity to, to learn as an individual, but also appreciate other experiences. Right. So it was Say, for example, if I read one book by a black author, then I would, I might think, oh, that's how mm -hmm. all that's the, yes. now I understand the black experience. Or if I read one book by an Asian author, then I think, oh, now I understand Asian people kind of is that right. like where, yes. you know, everybody has an individual. That's experience. dangerous. Yes. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I mean, that's that's a really great point, because I think sometimes that does happen, especially mm -hmm. about that in schools when they come up with books for kids to read and they 
make sure to include some diverse authors, but it might be like one black author, one Asian author, right. and it kind of gives a wrong impression to kids. Um, so what can, can people, people do? What should they do after? I mean, obviously, like you're saying, they should read yeah. more books and not just let it be one book from, from a different group. And then how can they use that to maybe to springboard into doing community work? Or what, is, what are some examples of what people could do after, in addition to just reading? Yeah, so I, we all know that reading is an individual activity. So it's really important to engage in conversations with other individuals so that you can form, uh, just be more well informed about a cultural experience or continue diversifying your reading if maybe for example, if you've read books that have all been by Black authors but are set in slavery, maybe you see something else outside of that era so that you know Black people are not a monolith. They have more experiences and there's beautiful stories out there. So um, definitely engaging in conversations, whether it's a book club. It could be a book club of two people. It could be one that's celebrity hosted, whichever, but really seeking opportunities to talk to other people so that you can just continue learning. Um, I think another way is, so you've read the book, perhaps you can recommend it how we were talking about school. Maybe it's a book that you want your children's teachers to read, or it could be something that you wanna read with other parents at the school. Um, or I know we have a lot of banned books now. Is it a book that you want to petition to say that it should be part of the literature and curriculum there at that institution? That's, that's a great idea. I mean, I, we should mention that you have a book club, if you want to talk about that a little bit, because I think, um, I mean, I love in-person book clubs, and I'm, those, if you're looking for one, sometimes you can find one through your library if you're looking for something local. Yeah. But now there's so many options available that you can find online ones. Um, so can you tell us some about your book club? Yeah, so my book club, we meet once a month virtually. It's via Zoom, and it's through the app or website book clubs dot com and so we, we we meet once a month um we're always reading books by diverse authors and what's been fun is that for some of our meetings the authors join us for a q a session so then you're able to ask the author questions so while you were reading if something like a, a thought provoked you and, and you want to know more or perhaps just understand what their intention was with a specific character or like this plot twist you're able to ask them there um so that has been a lot of fun and also just being able to connect with people outside of like your local community has been nice so we have um, members that are global so they're they're across the u.s but then we do have a few international folks that are able to join us when the time zones connect correctly so that has been really um i think an immersive experience that elevates your overall love of reading yeah definitely and then and for people who are looking for motivation to read, sometimes yes. you might be more motivated. You're like, oh, I need to finish this before. That. Accountability. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. And and um, can you suggest other resources that people could look into? I mean, I had never even heard of bookclubs.com. Okay. Until, yeah. Or are there other ways that people, things that people might be think of um, as far so, as if you want to go for it? with bookclubs.com there there's multiple book clubs listed there so it's possible that you could even find something that's in your community um there's book clubs listed there that are by theme or genre so if you like thrillers if you like historical fiction you can find a group that specifically reads there so maybe you'll be more enticed to continue joining mm -hmm. Um, there's also, I think, both like social media, so Instagram and TikTok are great ways to find book lovers. So, um, like myself, and there's also, I know, intro to electricism, yeah. she's on here, um, Don Shea. And so she has been great. Our book clubs actually did a collaboration where we read the same book, but we had our members communicate. And I think that that also exposed people to more perspectives. So that's also an option. Um, I know that there's uh, bookshops.org. If you're maybe not ready to join a book club, but you do want to see what books are out there, those 
purchases through that website support independent um, bookstores, which is really important in the realm of just business. Um, and then there's also if you do um, book of a month is another option where like they they kind of curate a list for you and then you pick which books you want to read for that month. So where, where do you get your books that you pick for your book club? Where do you find um, great books that you want to read? So, so through looking at other readers, what they're recommending, but also looking to see what upcoming novels are out there that are by diverse authors that could really um be a, be a good opportunity for discussion so like the book behind me familia that's the book that my book club is reading this month and we're meeting this coming sunday and so this book is it's a mystery but then there's also elements of just cultural immersion so it takes place in puerto rico and there are two our, our two main characters they may or may not be related but they don't know to what extent the relation mm -hmm. is and so there's some secrets there that we're unearthing and then at the same time learning about puerto rico's history and so i i think it with different books that we read like with um in Feb in december we read the alchemist and that was something different not a book that i would have read on my own and so that was actually a book that was suggested by a member and that was an insightful book it definitely it confused me at first but <laughs> i think through our discussion we were all able to find the the gems and really appreciate the lessons that were in there i love that you said you're open to suggestions from members because i think that is really really great thing about book club is that sometimes it encourages you to read books that you normally wouldn't pick up mm -hmm. and as maybe the you'll really love them and maybe you won't but right. at least you'll learn you'll kind of expose to something totally new um that maybe you wouldn't have before and i love that your books you know talking about kind of take oh someone we have an alchemist fan here i actually <laughs> enjoyed it but i haven't read it since i think i read it as i was graduating college okay it was very meaningful me to me at the time of thinking about what I wanted to do with my life. So I haven't read it for a while, but I remember I enjoyed it then. But do you, what are your favorite books that you recommend to everybody? Do you have any favorites or, yeah. or either, or something that you want to read that's coming up soon? So for books that I always recommend, one is Yellow Wife by Sadiqa Johnson. Mm -hmm. It's a historical fiction book. And this one is, um, based during the slavery era, but it gives you the perspective of a woman who is mixed race. And so how she doesn't belong in any category, but what her experience is overall in terms of thriving as a woman during this time is really beautiful. Um, another one is Against the Loveless World. And this is by a Palestinian author and I, I think it's it's important for us to find ways to support Palestinians and to learn what's going on in Gaza, as well as just how we can make an impact in our communities. So this book has really been um, one that I am recommending often. Love that. Yeah, yes. and I, I agree. I, I love the way that you're tying that the books that you're reading can also, I mean, they can teach us about the past, but they are also tied in very relevant to what's happening today yeah. and might encourage somebody to get involved in what's happening, maybe find ways that they can get involved in their community. That's really amazing. Yeah, and, and I think like a lot of times when we think about, oh, well, how can I um, participate in community organizations? Like the, the first thought may be to just do a donation. And while a donation is impactful and there, the monetary resource is useful, I think seeing what you can do um, in person and, and what actions you can take will have an impact both on the community that you're engaging with, but also yourself. Mm, that's that's a really great point. Yeah, because I I think it takes a it takes a little more um, maybe a little more effort, yeah. but also probably a little more rewarding when it's not mm -hmm. just writing yeah. a check. As you said, not that that's important, right? But you can also go further and and get get a little more involved. And I think I don't, personally, I think one of the things that's great about about reading, especially, I'm a big advocate of fiction. I love nonfiction, <laughs> but I like. Yeah, you can still learn so much through fiction. Yes. But fiction has the ability to connect with you emotionally, 
that maybe if you had heard about an issue, but then when you really connect with these characters, it kind of touches you in a way that might motivate you a little bit more to get involved and to do something. Is there, have you had that experience or? Yes. So with Against the Loveless World, I, I had that experience there where I just, I didn't know all that there was behind um, just Palestinian history and, and really how we got to today. And so this book gave me more appreciation for their experience and how um, just how history informs the present and, and what we can do to have a better future. I love that. And I, and that also goes back to your suggestions. You know, people are thinking, what can they do after they read the book? And one of them is just to talk, talk to other people in your mm -hmm. own circle, you know, and start telling them, hey, did you know about this or recommending the books and so on, instead of just kind of keep I mean, not keeping it to yourself but like you said like to try and reach out or maybe start a mm -hmm. start a book club or make sure right. um, that the teachers are reading it or, or what yeah and it, so especially it be you can do like a, a book donation like a book drive and you can I saw um where I am a local bookstore was doing that and then they were shipping the books to Florida and Texas <laughs> So that the schools there, or just the, the individuals there, could have access to the band books. That is amazing. I it, it, I know that there was, um, that had come up, um, my, my parents live in South Carolina. Okay. And it's not quite the same situation as Florida, but they still, they were asking for donations because it's something about, they, they were wondering if the the budget was going to allow them to buy only certain kinds of books mm -hmm. and if people donate books that gets around that because sometimes yeah. they like there's a list of what they have to buy with government funds so mm -hmm. that's a great idea yeah if people donate then that kind of gets around those restrictions a lot of times 100 percent. well and then also for for nonfiction readers i don't want to leave you out so i do have two recommendations great so unmasking ai and also under the skin. So with Unmasking AI, this gives us a perspective into like what is currently going on now with AI and, and how everything is very tech focused, but what does that mean for your individual privacy and how does it disproportionately impact people of color? And so that has been very insightful. And the author has been instrumental in different policies as well and making sure that um, organizations are being truthful with what they're using your data for and if you're signing a contract like I know a lot of times when the terms and conditions pop up we're not truly reading them right. but she's making sure that things are more transparent and really um, encouraging folks to read the terms and conditions so you know what potentially your data could be used for and then for under the skin this is dealing with health inequities and how um, people of color, again, are disproportionately impacted and how um, their health outcomes are poorer than those of their white counterparts. And so the implicit biases and other institutionalized racism that exists, how that has really laid the groundwork for what we're dealing with today. Wow, this sounds really amazing. Could you tell us again, what were the authors of those? So this one, I'm not certain how to pronounce her last name, but her first name is Joy. And for Under the Skin, it's Linda Villarosa. Amazing. Well, thank you. I'm just keeping an eye on the time because I know you're going to need to go no soon. No problem. Um, maybe, maybe we could just wrap up and talk about how can people connect with you? I know we've talked about your book club. How can they join or check it out if they want to, or, or how else can they connect with you? Okay, yeah, so um, if you follow me on Instagram, Pretty Little Bookshelf, in my bio there is a link and it'll have the steps for joining the book club. Um, and it's, again, it's free to join and we meet once a month virtually. Or you can go to bookclubs.com and search my book club there, but you can also see what other book clubs are available that may strike your, your interest. And your book club, you said, was all reading books by diverse authors, yes. right? Mostly fiction, maybe some nonfiction mixed in. Right. Yeah, mostly fiction. We'll see if a nonfiction gets in there, but thus far. <laughs>
<laughs> not fiction I'm just... takes me longer to read. I don't know. So fiction, I can promise that it'll be done by the date that we choose. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And you said the book that you guys are reading now is, uh, was it yeah. Familia, the one behind you? Mm -hmm. It's Familia by Lauren Rico. I love it. I have to say, I read a lot and all of these are books that I have not read or heard of. So we'll make sure we can uh, listen to nonfiction. Okay. <laughs> Amen for the fiction <laughs> girlies. Yeah. And, and, and talking about listening, audiobooks. Yes. Is also such a great way to do this. And I, I think it kind of got looked down on in the past. And I, I do that all the time because I've got three mm -hmm. kids and it's really hard for me to find time to sit down and read, but I can listen yes. to it when I'm Right. And then another great resource is Libby. Right. So you, you don't have to pay for the the book, but the only caveat is that you may be on a very long yeah. hold list. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. But it is. But and they and they have uh, ebooks and they have audiobooks. It's yes. Libby and ours also a uh, hoopla. I think mm -hmm. our, our our library. Has. And then there's also um, Libro FM. And, but they're similar to like Audible, so you would have to pay for the book, but your um, purchase, the money from your purchase goes again to an independent bookstore. Oh, nice. I, and that was Libro FM? Yes. Okay. Great. And well, I'll try and include the, the list of the books <laughs> recommended and things. And, and I don't think I'll be able to do it when I post on Instagram, but if you're joining mm -hmm. this late, this is going to be on Instagram in a few minutes. And then later on YouTube, and I'll try and include the resources. Yes, Libby, free with library cards. If you're not sure how to get on it, ask your librarian, who, by the way, librarians are yes. also a really great resource. So definitely. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to go ahead and let you go because I know you need to go by. I'm so happy we had the chance to talk. And you're such a great resource and so fun to follow you on Instagram. I'm not on TikTok, but if you are, <laughs> you can definitely follow her there. <laughs> And like thank I said, uh, this will be posted later if you joined us late. Thank you so much. Thank and thanks you. to everybody for watching. Take Bye. care. Bye.